Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and in this video I want to show you how to deal with Garrus. Garrus, as he flexes mighty muscles, definitely one of the stronger game, uh, characters in the game at this moment, and as such, as uh, his obvious strengths are becoming more and more well known to the general public, a lot more people are picking up this character, and a lot of people are getting away with stuff that you shouldn't be able to get away with. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to get around some of the flaws the character has, because yes, he does have some flaws, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So from stuff like the sand trap here, uh, to some general weaknesses in his game plan, I'm going to be going over a bunch of different things you can do to help stop Garrus. Now, before we get into some of the more specific weaknesses about Garrus, let's just talk about some general weaknesses, because yeah, he, he does have weaknesses. Even though he's a pretty complete character and is obviously one of the better characters in the game, he still does have some weaknesses. And what's some of those weaknesses? Well, first up here, the projectile sweep. Now, it's super awesome, obviously, you know, and he has a lot of stuff to work with here. Uh, if you're, uh, depending on which variation you're in, the move, uh, the sand pit move is the same startup, the same negative on block. But it does different things depending on what variation you're in. That's awesome. And uh, if you're in the other competitive variation, New Era, then you have the Sand uh, Pillar, which is a whole other layer of stuff, right? But uh, one inherent weakness to this move is despite the fact that you control the range of the move here. So uh, we have uh, Medium, we have Close, we have Far, we have Extreme Range here. There are dead zones to the move. So right here, can I hit him with the Far one? Nope. Can I hit him with the Very Far one then? Nope. He's just fine. This is a dead spot. I can't hit him with Sand Pillar in this range. Now, in this specific range, can I hit him with the Sand Trap then? Yes, I can. So it does cover different ranges than this, the Pillar, right? But the Sand uh, Trap also has the same issue. Now, I will say Sand Trap is much more forgiving than Sand Pillar in this regard here, so I can miss from this range here. But if I'm even like a Pillar uh, pixel closer, it'll miss. Uh, it does matter a lot. The Pillar, uh, sorry, uh, the Sand Trap versus the Pillar, the character width. So characters like Garrus, who has a very wider profile, it's going to be easier to hit him from certain ranges than uh, not. A uh, thinner character like Katana would actually kind of miss at that range. Uh, so character width matter. But just like the pillar, the Sand Trap also can have dead zones, right? Uh, so that is an issue. Garrus has to constantly manage where the enemy is when he's trying to do uh, his any kind of projectile game, be it the trap or the pillar. So stuff like this. If you're far away and he's very confident in the, you know, the range he has to deal with you at, if you do something like just bum rush him, right? He's going to be stuck doing a far away sand trap and just kind of open for whatever you want to do right not going to be able to defend himself uh, very well because there's no travel time right like a lot of traditional projectiles they go horizontally across the screen and they dip that real estate and if you're just dashing forward like a crazy person you're gonna get smacked uh for garris's case this isn't the case right so just abnormal movement can really throw off any kind of projectile game he's trying to work with be it the sand pillar or the sand trap so, with that in mind, and movement being sort of a counter to some of Garrus' options, let's just talk about uh, one of the things that really doesn't work in his favor, especially considering the trend Mortal Kombat follows, which is a lot of neutral heavy stuff, you know, a lot of big buttons and all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to that, his range, honestly, is not one of the better ones in the game. Uh, so he can kind of compete at the range of the shoulder, but it's very easy to walk out of it. Uh, and more to the point, it's very easy to walk out of the range of pretty much everything he has. Like, for... Uh, 2-1-2, really good, except he barely moves forward while doing 4-2-1. And you can easily whiff punish him while he's doing it. Uh, he has the shoulder, which is not that fantastic as far as range is going. Uh, it's also considering the startup, like someone like Collector uh, can hit you from literally this position with 14 frames, right? He's got to really walk up and get in there. Uh, his options from the shoulder are pretty much unsafe when you want to go for a very low damage option. Uh, long story short is, when it comes to just, uh, walking back and forth in neutral and, uh, attacking from the range of your more effective longer range buttons, Garrus does suffer in that regard. He will lose out. Uh, even a character, you know, not as high tier, like, say, Johnny Cage, right? Johnny Cage can literally dance circles around Garrus when it comes to, uh, playing around in the neutral and playing footsies, as he can just walk in and out of the range of everything Garrus can do, and then just, you know, full combo him on whiff, right? Because uh, he just doesn't have the range to compete. Now, obviously, once they start moving around a lot, that's when you want to catch him with, you know, the projectiles and all that kind of stuff. As he has all sorts of range options, once again, 
Uh, if your movement is somewhat erratic, it's going to be very difficult for Garrus to get a hold of you. So one of the biggest weaknesses Garrus has is just basically a mobile opponent. Now, one of the biggest things I see a lot of people struggling with is the Sand Pit. Now, between uh, which variation you have, the move is a bit different, uh, but they both have the exact same startup and the exact same negative amount on block. So the first thing here, and I see a lot of people not taking advantage of this, is, as you see here, uh, it's fairly quick for what it does, 17 frame startup to be sure, uh, but it is negative 19 on block. And it's negative 19 up here, and it's negative 19 from the full screen away. So no matter where you are, it is negative 19 on block, and we can definitely take advantage of this. Negative 19, uh, for what it does, honestly, it's still pretty good recovery, right? But there's a lot of ways to make sure the enemy can't, you know, get away with it. Not every character can punish it at every range, but I want to give you some examples here. So in our example here, he's going to be doing the far version of the move, so this is the second longest version he has against, you know, plain old Johnny Cage, right? Mr. Mid-Tier Honesty himself. And right there, Reversal Punish. So even at that extreme range, we can actually totally punish the Shadow Trap, or sorry, the Sand Trap. Uh, it is not the easiest timing. You're going to have to be pretty quick on the ball. And, you know, don't get hit like I just did, right? But it is possible to punish for even that far away with a character like Johnny Cage. Now, that's with the Shadow Kick, right? Uh, not every character has an advancing norm like that, but I want to show you some more examples here at very ranges, uh, various ranges of the screen that people can deal with the Sand Trap. So Cetrion, no matter where she is on screen, as long as you have reversal timing, she can always punish the Sand Trap on block with her geyser move. No matter where you're on screen, because she can aim it just like Garrus can aim the Sand Trap, right? So since the Sand Trap is 19 frame startup, and with reversal timing, your geyser is true 18 frame startup, you can always punish it. You do got to be mildly quick on the draw, but for an example here, anywhere on screen, no matter what, Cetrion can always punish the Sand Trap. Liu Kang's another one. At any range other than extreme absolute full screen, a reversal timing flying kick will punish Garrus. So three of the four possible ranges, Liu Kang has Garrus for free. Uh, the closer you are, the lot better it's going to get, obviously. But anything other than absolute max screen, Liu Kang, easy flying kick punish on Garrus. Even a character like Shao Kahn with reversal timing, he can still punish it from mid-screen with the Shadow Charge. So even a character that is kind of poor off, can still deal with it. Oh no, Grant, obviously, he can't deal with it from farther away ranges, right? But everyone has options, especially once you're kind of mid-range or closer. Pretty much everyone has options with dealing with this. Now, say you're a character like Collector too, even, right? Now, Collector can't punish it with uh, some of the ways we showed earlier, uh, but he can remain airborne, and he can kind of easily kind of outzone Garrus in this regard, as he can just keep chucking these bad boys here, and Garrus can't do too much about it, as Sampit only strictly hits on the ground, and even if Garrus blocks, there's almost no recovery on the actual grenade itself. So, Collector can just kind of keep chucking these bad boys in the air, and Garrus has no other real option other than well, to want to get in, because Sand Trap can't deal with it. Now, in the other variation, you do have the Sand Pillar as well. And the Sand Pillar is uh, much more suited to people who want to jump all day and throw projectiles like, say, Collector or Katan or something. Uh, they can shut that down pretty quick, right? But, on the flip, the Sand Pillar is even slower to start and he is even more negative on block, right? So then all of a sudden, even someone like Collector can start dealing with it. So basically, when dealing with Sand Trap or Sand Pillar, you have to look at your character's options. Now, obviously, some characters like Sub-Zero are going to have it a little bit easier than other ones, right? You know, with the speed of the slide and all that. But some characters, even if you can't beat it, maybe you can play around it as we show the Collector, right? Or Collector or, say, Katana, since they're going to be airborne and throw so many projectiles, they can kind of, I'm not going to say easily uh, subvert the Sand Trap game, but they can definitely force Garrus to like think a different way. Uh, so for Garrus in the Infinite Warren variation that only has the Sand Trap, it's difficult for him to deal with characters like that. Now, the uh, New Era variation of Garrus, the one with the Sand Pillar, uh, definitely deals with that a lot better, but then, you know, doesn't have a good mid-screen damage, all that other kind of stuff. And plus, once again, it's even slower to start up with and more punishable on block. So if you can line up your options to deal with the punishes and all that kind of stuff and know your ranges, hey, you can do it. And the very, very, very least, every time you block, you can definitely dash forward and start applying some pressure as long as you're not too far away from him. Now, when dealing with Garrus, one of the biggest things you got to worry about is this guy right here. So it's forward 212. So it's a very fast mid, 
and it leads to a combo no matter what variation you're in for Garrus, although uh, the one Infinite Ward does more damage than the other one, but still, regardless, he's at minimum going to get 20% on you, right, if he connects. And it's also barely negative on block. So what's the downside here? Well, first one here, and this is a big one that you really got to pay attention with all characters here. It doesn't have too much range. Like, see here, I can easily just walk out of it, right? And if I can walk out of it, then I can just go, like, you know, hey, I see you missing. I'm just going to poke you, right? See you missing. I'm just going to poke you and so forth and so on and so forth, right? Uh, depending on what character you are, you got to change your buttons up here because not every character is going to have the same kind of counter poke, but just figure it out, right? The range is actually quite easy to walk out of, and unless you're in the corner, uh, he's going to have some difficulty kind of tagging you with this, right? Because his other options from range are kind of poor and very unsafe. So if he's going for this, he's got to go for it, and you can just simply walk out and punish it. No big deal. No fuss. No muss. Now, besides that, there is also some wonkiness to it. Uh, it mostly comes from the second hit. So I'm going to show you an example right now just to kind of give you an idea. Oh, what's this? I'm actually like totally knocking him out of the combo. So what's happening here is it has some difficulty tracking low profile hitboxes. So after the first hit, you can actually totally just kind of low profile him. And not only that, same idea here with Katana. So I can hit him with down three or down two, the uppercut. Now you have to have, you know, some modicum of reaction. You have to understand he's going to be going for the spring. But yeah, you can just straight up knock him right out of it. And Katana is not the only character. So a character like Jackie, this has to do with a lot of hitbox interactions here. But if you block the first hit while you are crouching, you can just straight up backdash out. As you see right there, not only backdash out, but like, you know, hey, punish time, right? Uh, so this has to be with a crouching block specifically. If you stand block, you will not be able to backdash out in time. This is with a crouch block only because uh, it moves you back a bit further as far as I can tell. But yeah, you can totally do that and then just punish away and do whatever you want. Uh, it can get pretty crazy. You can even go for a crushing blow. As you can see right there. And just continue from that. So this is a Jackie specific option. Sub-Zero is another case here. All you have to do is hit down in three. That simple. It moves him away from the uh, second hitbox, and there's nothing Garrus can do about it. As simple as that, and you beat it clean as day. For a character like Frost, much the same deal here. The down three just puts her so low to the ground. Garrus cannot connect in time, and she gets the little bit of damage it does, and then it's her turn because she has 10 frames advantage on hit. So Johnny Cage, he makes out straight like a bandit here. So if you just let go of block after the first hit, the second hit literally cannot connect. And if it cannot connect, you can get a full combo off of it, right? Uh, so that's just using the hitbox to your advantage. And so these are just some examples. There's a lot more that I personally don't know about, I'm very sure. Uh, there's some of these examples that uh, were shown to me by other players. Uh, but there's a lot of ways. A lot of them have to do with low profiling. Yes, uh, Johnny Cage, uh, as you can see, you know, uh, some oddities to it. Uh, Cassie, also with her nut punch or nut kick or whatever it is in this game, she can also low profile it. A lot of characters have options to abuse it. Now, obviously, these are character-to-character -character bases, right? And once again, still, the best option of dealing with it is simply whiff punishing. Because once again, once he starts doing it, while he does have some forward momentum, he doesn't move that fast uh, quickly. And you can kind of easily just walk past it and just punish him for doing it if he uh, whiffs. Generally, you want to try your whiff punish after the second hit. Because if you go too early, you might get smacked. Uh, but yeah, the range is not fantastic on it. So that's the main way you want to deal with it, right? Just walk backwards and deal with the range that way if he gets uh, very happy about it. But yeah, so those are a lot of character-specific examples in dealing with it. Now, another really big one I see all the time. So Garrus, if you're not aware, has that very nasty crushing blow on uh, the boot. And the boot is really good. And the shoulder, which is the prelude to the boot, is basically his longest range normal. So if he's trying to approach you and get any kind of footsies going on, this is going to be the normal he's going to approach you with. However, there's a really big issue with it, and it's uh, super not safe on block if he tries to go into the boot. Uh, the boot, uh, sorry, the uh, shoulder into the grab itself is very, very, very negative. So if we attempt to do the move here and gets blocked, the boot will never come out if the grab doesn't happen. But you see here, negative 14 on block. And this isn't really something you can single hit confirm either. They pretty much have to go for it. So negative 14 is death on block. And I see a lot of people getting away with it. 
Uh, he doesn't really push you back any significant amount. You can just literally go uh, stand one into whatever string and into a full combo. Uh, it is very negative on block and extremely punishable. Another one of Garrus's biggest threats is the threat of the splash. So the splash is a wide, wide hitbox. Uh, you can easily try to do it with a cross up and of course Mortal Kombat being Mortal Kombat, he can't cross you up in like the left right sense. But a lot of things like if you try to uppercut him and all that kind of stuff can be somewhat difficult as you can see uh, with the cross up as you switch over you might hit the wrong side or you might just be too slow all that kind of stuff right it's somewhat difficult to deal with uh, especially if he's doing to you uh, a cross up or any manner of weird situation right so how do we deal with this besides just block it uh, especially considering uh, if you block it you still get a 50 50 mix up uh, off the one one string he can go overhead low the overhead low hit on the exact same frame so you basically just kind of have to guess so how do we deal with it so we have Kotal Khan here and Kotal Khan he's big he's slow he's low tier so obviously someone like Kotal Khan couldn't possibly deal with this right no Kotal can totally deal with it so the secret to dealing with this move is a low profiling move so it doesn't matter what it is as long as it lowers your profile. So Kotal we're using uh, down and three. And it just moves you low enough to the ground so when the splash is trying to connect, you're simply not there to be hit. So uh, depending on your timing, if you're a little too slow, you're going to get smacked. But in this situation here, not only can we hit, we can get a little bit of conversion off it, right? So low profiling moves are the secret to this. And not everyone's going to be able to deal with it as well as everybody else, right? Uh, for some people, it might be your down three. Uh, some people might be your down four. Uh, some people might have a special that low profiles. Some people, hey, maybe your uppercut's a little bit better than usual and you low profile with the uppercut, right? Uh, but what you want to do is find something that lowers you to the ground more than the regular crouch. And that is generally what you're going to be using to defeat this move. So that's just a few ideas on how to deal with Garrus. Now, once again, obviously, he's an incredibly strong character. But never means you're unbeatable, right? And just as a quick little recap, Garrus, especially Infinite Warden, has some issue dealing with people who have a very airborne offense that don't have to keep up their feet on the ground too, too much. He obviously has some difficulty in neutral. You want to be able to want him to have to rely on sand traps and stuff like that, uh, as long as you're flitting in and out of his neutral, because his range is not the best in the game. And once he starts for going, relying on sand trap stuff, the fact that if you just quickly change pace here and start dashing in or jumping in, the fact is he's going to have difficulty course correcting, right? Because he has four different options to aim all of his uh, range attacks. And hey, it's human error, right? You're going to, you could be over here. He's going to go for the far. And as soon as you start dashing in, he's going to miss. That's the kind of stuff you want to force on him. Plus, as we went over to a lot of the character specific stuff, and that is by no, no means a complete list. That is just some examples. Please test for yourself all these situations that we showed. You might find uh, some stuff not covered in this video. In fact, I pretty much guarantee it because I'm only showing you what I know and I definitely don't know at all, right? So there's going to be a lot of character specific examples on how to deal with Garrus and by no means is he an unstoppable character. Now, obviously, he's very strong, but is he unstoppable? No. And just to leave you one little tip, if you say screw it and you want to play Garrus anyways, keep this in mind. Uh, Garrus Sand Trap, punish the Sand Trap. So if you block a Sand Trap at range of Garrus, you can punish it with your own. So keep that in mind for a mirror match. Anyways, that is it for me. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.